Hello, everyone, and welcome to Purposely Designed. This is Angela, and I'm back with another word today. We want to talk about if you're not willing, then you're not worthy. If you're not willing, then you're not worthy. So let's start off with prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for opening up our ears to hear. We thank you, Lord God, for opening up our eyes to see. And we thank you, Lord, for opening up our hearts to be receptive to your will, to your word, and to your way, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for closing doors that ought not to have been opened. And thank you, Father, for opening the doors that you would have for us to go into in 2023, Father. Everything that you have for me, everything that you have for those that are listening, uh, we will receive in 2023. So, God, we thank you, Lord God, for making ways out of no ways. Thank you, Lord God, for opening the sun that the day. Even now, God, every door that you would have open. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you are your son. Hallelujah, that you have opened your son. God, heal in and about sin. Even now, God, every inch of your son. God, heal in my Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for healing, God, even now, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for opening up up the eyes of the blind, Father. Thank you, O God, for opening up the ears to those that are deaf, that cannot hear, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've already done on the cross, Father, because your word says that by by your stripes, O Lord Jesus, that we are here healed. So, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for through Jesus Christ, by his stripes, we are healed. Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. And I give you glory for everything that you've done already on the cross. And Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ, that we have been set free from all sin, all iniquity. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for putting us on the right path, oh God, of your will, your way, your righteousness, Lord God, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Father, for every door that has been opened, even now, God. Thank you for closing all the doors that are not right, Father. We thank you. Thank you for your divine alignment. Even now, God, line us up, Father, with your will, your word, and your ways. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for the mind of Christ, Lord God, and that heart of flesh, Father. Now, Lord God, we just surrender to your will, to your way. Lord God, we thank you for obedience, Lord God. Your word said obedience is greater than sacrifice. So, Father, we thank you for allowing us to become even more obedient to your will, to your way, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you all praise and all glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank God and amen. So, today, we want to talk about If you're not willing, then you're not worthy. This morning, I had a conversation with a pastor. And they made a statement. They said, your first ministry is at home. They didn't say it only one time. They repeated it multiple times. In the midst of... um, the statement prior to the statement, I seen some contemplation and as to what they were going to say. And I saw, you know, the person that was with them look kind of around as I looked at them and I knew there was chatter. So the first time, first, first of all, we talked about the chatter. 
we talked about uh, in the last uh, podcast about how voices, you know, people get to talking uh, about your past or about things that they think that they know about you and but not really knowing, you know what I mean? Um, Some have known, but do they know now? And so um, a lot of times, no, they don't know. They don't know the changes that you've been through. They don't know you as for who you are today. So, you know, sometimes we get information and the information that we've received is not accurate. But that's another message for another day and another time. Um, the part that we're looking at right now is your first ministry is at home. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house. He have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Matthews 10 and 34 says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. He said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the mo- and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foe shall be they of his own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that received you receiveth me. He that and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So here I, I saw 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that, in 38, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. If you're not willing, then you're not worthy. So not only this, but it reminded me of Jesus, you know, when he began to choose his disciples in Matthews 4 and 17, it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were for were fishers. Lord have mercy. And he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So they didn't say, oh, Lord, no, we got to, you know, get this and that together first before we um, follow you. It says they straightway left their nets and followed him. 21 says, and going on from thence, he saw the other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother. In a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. He called the sons. Talking about James and John. 
and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. They didn't say, oh, no, we can't leave our dad. They left everything. Everything. Yes, everything. These people didn't contemplate within themselves as to how, what, when, or why they got up immediately and began following Christ. Today, we have every excuse instead of getting up and following him where he leads us. St. John sixteen thirteen says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. He said, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John 8, 31 says, then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye, then are ye my disciples indeed so not only this but as we follow him through the power and leading of the Holy Ghost we'll have to be open to do the will of the Father Matthew 12 and 50 says for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven The same is my brother and sister and mother. This is how we become children of the kingdom of heaven. Matthews 18 and 1 says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him In the midst of them and said, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. St. John thirteen thirty five says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And a lot of us today, we don't have that love. He said in Matthew 18 and 1 that we just read, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We have to be humble and we need love one towards another. St. John 15 and 2 says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So you can't bear fruit unless you are in the vine. How can you bear fruit of yourself? He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Note that without him, There's nothing that we can do. You want to do, you're going to have to be in him. You're going to have to be in this vine. 
If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the eye, the fire and they are burnt. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear how much fruit much fruit so shall ye be my disciples how because you bear fruit and not just fruit much fruit as the father have loved me so have i loved you continue ye in my love so continue in christ's love and bear forth fruit If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment. Listen to his commandment. The commandment of the Lord says that ye love one another. As I have loved you. So. Let's let's see what. What have we stated. So far. We have to. Continue. In the word. Right. We have to be humble. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth not in me and I am him. In him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Herein is my father glorified that she bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. This is my commandment that she love one another as I have loved you. Matthew seven thirteen says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Be aware of false prophets which come to you. In sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are waving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit 
Every tree that bringeth not forth fruit, good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They going to know you by your fruit. What fruit do you produce? What's more important to you? Are you willing Because if you're not willing, then you're not worthy. He that does the will of my father. Is worthy of me. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What are you willing to lose? What are you willing to leave? If you're not willing to leave, to walk away, and to follow Christ, how can you be worthy of him? He told the disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They hurried, they left their nets and they followed him. He called up two others. They left their father, nets, and ship and followed him. Immediately. With no questions. Are you willing. To take up your cross. And follow Christ. Even if it means. Having to leave everything else. And everyone else. There is people who left. Everything. Everybody. And follow Christ. There's a song that I used to sing. And it, the song saying, went, I'll go even if I have to go by myself. I'll sing if I have to sing by myself. I don't mind, Lord. I'll go on, I'll go on. I'll sing on, I'll sing on. If I have to sing by myself, if I have to go by myself, the the question is, are you willing to go even if you have to go by yourself? Even if you have to leave your sons and your daughters, even if you have to leave everything behind, are you willing to go?
everything, everything starts somewhere. I was um, talking about myself as to where I started and where I had started was Christ proven, God proven himself as I sought, I found him, you know, I asked and he turned around and he answered. I asked a question and I felt I received the answer as a child. Then from there, with that answer that I received, he turned around and he made his voice clear. So that I could hear him speak and know his voice. Then after he began to speak. And he gave me the gift of tongues. And the laying on of hands as a child. And I just thank him. Because that's where I began. He placed me there for a reason. And I know that he does the same. He's not, he don't change. He's he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And we just have to reverence him as such and know that he is the one that does the work. We can't do anything of ourselves. It takes him to do it. We just have to receive what God has sent for us so that we can be all that he called for us to be. We can't slack. We can't lack. We got to follow him just as he has already commanded us. Take up your cross. Follow Christ. You know, we need that mind of Christ. We need God to speak to us. And teach us and lead us and guide us into all truth through the Holy Spirit. Yes, he can still speak to us as well with an audible voice. But he also is able to lead us and guide us through his spirit and through his word. And so the more we surrender, the more we'll see. God working in you and in me. Everything. We have to surrender everything. Be willing to take up your cross and follow Christ. Everything that you have, are we willing? Everything. To leave everything and go where he called you to go. If God leads you to it, he is able to get you through it. We're going to pray right here, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your leading and your guiding through your spirit, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed shall prosper, Lord. Help us to reverence the fact of what's more important. God, whatsoever you say, that we shall do. And Father, we give you praise and we give you honor. And we give you glory, God, because we know that you're doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to your power that worketh in us father we thank you lord god for teaching us for leading us for guiding us through your holy spirit thank you lord god that um no weapon formed against us will prosper Thank you, Lord God, for taking care of our families as we follow you. 
Thank you, Father, for taking care of our homes as we follow you. Thank you, Father, for taking care of our vehicles as we follow you. Everything, Lord God, as we follow you, that you are able to keep everything, Lord God. As we continue in your word and in your will, Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. Thanking you for what you've done. Thanking you for what you're doing. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you. That your word says in Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that as we seek first your kingdom, everything else shall be added unto us. Lord God, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Father, to seek first after the kingdom. And your righteousness. Because through you father. We know that everything else. Shall be added. Unto us. Because your word says so. Matthew 16 19 said. And I will give unto thee. The king. The keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Lord God, we thank you for giving us the keys to be able to bind things that are not of you and to loose the things that are of you. Lord God, we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we just give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord God, for your spirit. Thank you for leading us and guiding us and protecting us, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Now, Lord, every th- everybody that's listening to the sound of my voice, I just pray that you will continue to cover. That you will continue, Lord God, to leave, lead us, to guide us, and to protect us, O oh God. Through your precious Holy Ghost. Thank you God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord we give you forever give you praise. And honor and glory. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you're not willing. And you're not worthy. I thank God because he causes us to be worthy. He pricks our hearts and causes us to be willing. I thank him because greater is he that's in us than he that's of the world, than our flesh. I thank God for everything that he's doing. I thank him for new revelation. I thank him for just a sound mind and a loving heart. I thank him for his compassion, for his joy, his strength. Thank you, Lord. I thank him for everything that he's done and everything that he's doing and all the things that he's going to do. 
You know, we're right there in the midst of everything. God is doing things among us, just in case you didn't know. Yes, he did. Oh, thank you, Father, for what you're doing within us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that you're showing us some things. Hallelujah, that you're doing even now. God, I thank you, Lord God. For speaking through us, oh God. Thank you for your hands being our hands, oh God. Thank you for your feet being our feet, Lord God. Thank you for covering us. Hallelujah. That you cover even the multitude of sins. God, I thank you. Thank you, God, for everything that you're doing and everything that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. Until next time, God bless.